So we have seen how the information about the stimulus is communicated, is transferred to different parts and how it is processed and how responses are produced in animals as well as in plants. So we have seen in animals there is a nervous tissue in which the information is carried in the form of electrical impulses. But whereas in case of plants, there is no nervous tissue to do such work, there some kind of electrochemical or chemical messengers, they take the information. Now let us see, once again we will just observe actually how the communication is done in the bodies of multicellular organisms in both plants as well as in animals. Here we see the reflexes or the quick responses shown by these organisms. Both plants and animals they show the responses sometimes very quick response like a reflex action, sometimes slow response, slow movements, sometimes very slow movements. Growth is very slow. You can't observe with your naked eye how the plant is growing up. You need to observe a time lapse video which is short for some two days, three days or one week or one month. The camera is fixed at one point and it is short how the plant is growing, how the flowers are blooming. You can find these videos in YouTube. Then only it is possible to see the movement there in a time lapse video. But here we cannot see because it is very slow. And even the communication, the passage of information from the source of that stimuli where it is received and to the other point is also very slow. In animals, we have seen the electrical impulses are the major means of communication. But if you see only the electrical impulses, in animals the communication of information is done only by the electrical impulses or anything else. There is something else. What is that? Why only these electrical impulses are not sufficient for the communication? Electrical impulses, they cannot pass to each and every cell of our body. They can carry the information. They are connected to various parts of our body. Even then, cell cannot continuously transmit the electrical impulses. And one more thing, only the nerve cells can carry out the electrical impulses. The other tissues, the other cells present in our body, they cannot communicate electrical impulses. Muscle cells do not have any electrical impulses. So these electrical impulses are not supplied to each and every cell. They are not passed to each and every cell because nerve cells are not connected to each and every cell of our body. So these are not sufficient to communicate between the different cells. But how the communication is done in multicellular organisms? What is the alternate? The other thing is chemical communication or chemical coordination. Certain chemicals are produced in the bodies of plants and animals. These chemicals, they are transferred from one part to another part along with the other transported materials like water and minerals and whatever are there. So they are carried by the transport system of the body. They are carried to different cells. The cells will be having the specific receptors for this material, for this chemical, they receive it. Then the information is communicated to that cell. This is called as chemical coordination which is observed in both plants and animals. Especially in plants, only the chemical coordination takes the major part of communication. Plant growth is totally controlled by these chemical messengers present in the plant body. Generally, we use a term for these chemical messengers that is the hormones. The hormones that are found in plants are called as phytohormones. Phytohormones. Even in animals, even in case of human beings, hormones play a major role in your growth, in your development. So in many of the various life activities and execution of various changes in your body at different stages of your life, all these are controlled and coordinated by the hormones. Those are the animal hormones. 
the hormones that are present in the plants are called as phytohormones we discussed that plants are plants are able to produce responses to light to light to gravity to water so in the previous class we discussed plant is able to show response to all such stimuli that is because of certain chemical compounds chemical messengers in the body of the plant those are nothing but phytohormones now let us see some plant hormones and how they help the plant in various situations so the phytohormones the major phytohormones here we have auxin cytokinins gibberellins and abscisic acid so let us see the first one auxin this is a very important hormone found in the plant it helps the plant to grow in its height so the height of the plant increases that is due to the hormone auxin and not only that this auxin is responsible for the plant to show phototrophism plants they show response to light called as phototrophism phototrophism that means tendency towards light sunlight here is the sunlight here is the window So here is the sun here you have a potted plant So here this is the direction of sunlight and here is the plant Naturally what happens the shoot of the plant always bends towards sunlight This is phototrophism that means the stem it bends towards sunlight it takes a bend like this so how this happens how can a plant bend towards this sun i already told you that the plants they show this phototrophism that is because of the chemical substance present in their bodies that is the auxin where is this auxin found auxin is found in the tip of the shoot of a plant say for example we take this part i'm drawing a magnified view of this tip this is the tip of the plant here is the sun so this direction here is the tip i told you that auxins are found in the tip of the plant here 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 is the auxin now here is the sun what happens now this is the stimulus sunlight the auxin present here in the tip of the shoot it diffuses into the other side means the whole auxin will come to this other half the half which is away from the sunlight this half of the tip is towards the sunlight i'm drawing a dotted line so in this half there is no auxin all the auxin is diffused to the other side which side on which side there is no sunlight so sunlight is a stimulus when there is sunlight the auxin which is present on this side it diffuses to the other side so the concentration of the auxin increases in this part so this part whatever this part is there this part increases in its size so what happens here you can find the growth the growth is increased on this side say for example this is left this is right so uh, whatever the auxin is there on the left side all the auxin is migrated or diffused to the right side so the right side of the shoot tip is grown much bigger compared to the left side so automatically what happens it takes a bend like this so in this way the plant is able to bend towards sunlight this is what happens and here who is the responsible one the chemical messenger auxin is responsible auxin is also responsible to increase the height of the plant and whereas the next one cytokinins cytokinins it helps in the cell division the name itself tells cyto means cell kinesis means division breaking kinesis means breaking cyto means cell so this is the hormone which helps in cell division and this hormone is mostly found in the places where there is a rapid cell division where is the rapid cell division in which part of the plant you find cell division so here the cytokinins they help in the cell division these cytokinins are found in the fruits and seeds 
because in case of the fruit the fruits they grow rapidly so for the rapid growth lot of cell division is required and cytokines are found in the fruits in the same way when the seeds are sprouting when they are becoming into seedlings and plants then there is rapid cell division there you find cytokines so the next hormone gibberellins the gibberellins they help the plants growth in width wise the stem of the plant grows because of the gibberellins so auxins and gibberellins they help in the growth of the plant auxins help in increasing the length of the plant means for the cell elongation auxins are helpful and for the width of the plant the gibberellins they help and for cell division the cytokines uh, they take the role of cell division so in this way different hormones help the plant in its growth is there any hormone to stop the growth of plant yes abscisic acid abscisic acid it is it works in reverse direction that means it helps the plant to stop its growth and shed the leaves so when there is a little amount of water scarcity of water when there is no sunlight in certain seasons like in which seasons you see the leaves falling in autumn season the leaves fall down the fall down of the leaf is because of this abscisic acid and even when the leaves are yellow that means when the leaves are ripen then the leaf has to be shed down otherwise the leaf consumes the energy present in the plant it is useless when the leaf turns to yellow it is useless for the plant because it cannot prepare any food so the leaf has to fall down so this abscisic acid it forms a layer between the stalk of the leaf and stem so by that it detaches the leaf and see that make makes the leaf to fall down so that is what done by the abscisic acid so these are the various plant hormones that help the plant in its growth in movements as well as in uh, controlling their uh, various uh, activities of their uh, life processes are coordinated by these five hormones now let us look at the case of animals if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus